I will move on now to our, uh, our fifth and uh, final speaker. Um, and uh, I'll introduce now Brad Cavin, who is the uh, founder and CEO of Leaf and is ex BlackRock. Uh, Brad, you're the money man. I'm sure that there'll be lots of questions coming in from our online audience uh, for you. But um, first, the opening gambit question from me. Please do tell us all a little bit about yourself a little bit about your experience, your background, and your new, your new venture, LEAF. Sure, thank you. So uh, my name is Brad Cavan. I'm the co-founder and CEO of LEAF, a sustainable investment platform. We focus on bridging the gap between venture capital and mature markets. Uh, one of our big focus areas right now is capital intensive industries where we think we can create new forms of cash yield. Um, Prior to LEAF, I was a founding member of BlackRock's Renewable Power and Energy Infrastructure business, and then before that, or after that, uh, a founding member of Cowan Sustainable Investments uh, as well. And uh, glad to be here, by the way. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. Thanks very much indeed for that introduction. What, we're clearly in a, a super dynamic moment at the moment as we unlock from lockdown. What are your views as an investor on the long-term economic cycles we're facing uh, and the need for cash yield? Yeah, well, uh, I think what's super exciting about electric vehicles is it kind of illustrates the first iteration of our maturation of the use of energy. Um, you know, the amount of energy we use is a reflection of how advanced we are. And uh, it's a cool story. A, a friend of mine who uh, works at Thor Trucks or now Exos Trucks told me, this was two and a half years ago, uh, that when they tried charging their prototype vehicle, they blew two substations. And if you come from the power and energy investment world, like I do, you know, the business is selling electrons, right? So if somebody has got a huge demand for energy, that's good for business. And the fact that they, that one truck was capable of, of uh, compromising the, the you know, linear by grid to me gave us an indication that there is a huge amount of demand for power eventually that will associate itself with this maturation. Uh, and so, uh, in that case, right, I, I built a simulation of an electric vehicle. And if you do the math, uh, the amount of energy that we'll need to consume for wide mass adoption of EVs, both commercially uh, and on the consumer side, is tremendous. And so, uh, you know, your question about whether it's policy or it's investment, uh, I think the policy has to change, not because it's bad, but because it's old. It's not designed for in uh, a system where you have uh, demand for power or load that is dispatchable, meaning I can reroute traffic and as a result, reroute the supply and demand dynamics of power itself. Um, and so that doesn't, that construct doesn't exist. That's something that uh, I had the opportunity to kind of create with the utility. Uh, and so, uh, you know, that's exciting. Um, but the other piece of that component is that type of infrastructure investment in conjunction with utility is what creates cash yield. And from an investment perspective, interest rates are negative or low. And uh, you know, who knows, they could go negative in the United States. And uh, you have uh, an aging population globally who needs to retire. Uh, and these are uh, retirees that are gonna be retired from pensions and endowments. And these folks are looking for ways to generate income. And uh, there's a, a lot less income generation assets out there. And if they are existing, they are bid up and the returns are low. And so why not just uh, create some new forms of cash yield? And so that's one of our areas of focus as an investment platform. And so to answer your question, you know, policy, I think, is one. But investment is the other because uh, this all comes down to cost. Uh, you know, something people don't realize is that 30 percent of the cabs in New York City in 1907 were electric. Like electric is not new. It's just the, you know, the adoption and the maturation uh, is at the right time now. And so uh, in order for us to fully adopt to electric on the commercial side, uh, I, I personally believe that it's a function of policy, but also investment. But that investment can be beneficial, not just from a return perspective, but from an economic perspective, right? It creates jobs. It creates velocity of money which then means that we may have some inflation, which means that maybe rates don't have to be negative anymore. And so that's the thing is I think we should always think about the economic system we're facing as something we can influence, not something we have to sort of take as a given, but that's more of a you know, philosophical point. But yeah, I think electric vehicle infrastructure is a huge investment opportunity. I think uh, you know, 
And, and the best part is that it's sustainable, but it makes money. It will make, and, and for some of these businesses that don't make money yet, they will. Uh, it's just about cost deflation. So uh, if something is not profitable today, is the technology that it uses going to become increasingly cheap enough so that it will make money? Uh, and if people demand something, things get cheap. So, you know, it, it's a great kind of cycle that we're seeing. And uh, I say, to your point, uh, COVID changes that dramatically as well. Uh, and and, and uh, it creates other opportunities uh, in addition. Thanks so much indeed, Brad. Uh, very, very interesting opening gambit. Uh, so tell me a little bit more about um, your sense of the, the investment in the electric truck sector. I know that personally your happy place is perhaps investment in the charging infrastructure side, but what do you think are some of the opportunities for the, for the truck sector with investment and investors? Well, um, so, uh, you know, look, I, 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 I try to avoid what I don't know or I don't understand. Uh, and if you look throughout history, uh, you know, in the early 20th century, there were thousands of vehicle companies, and then only a handful survived. And I'm not talented enough to pick uh, to pick winners amongst uh, amongst uh, many. The benefit now, though, there is that there's a few vehicle companies that are very focused and, and well equipped with capital, um, and so they may have the opportunity to succeed. Where I am excited on a vehicle side, if I were to be excited, is something that was focused on solving a social problem that people will pay money for that creates a profit. And I know that sounds pretty simple, but uh, if you look at most of these companies, uh, they're, they're focused on all sorts of amazing things except profits. Um, but I do think in certain parts of the e-mobility space, perhaps the cost, the unit economics of the equipment may be sufficiently attractive to, to secure a long-term contract with municipalities and or cities that are profitable and are something that we would certainly invest in. But that doesn't mean that just because we won't invest in other types of things doesn't mean they can't be good investments. I just, I don't know how to choose moonshoot kind of things. I, I try to set low expectations. That way I'm never disappointed. Very good. Uh, so thank you very much indeed, Brad. Um, one more from me then. There are a bunch of questions from our audience, so I'll open it up. Um, I mean, I know from some of our previous chats that you have a clear sustainability mission, both in, as an individual and through Leaf, can you tell us a little bit more about that sustainability narrative and, and Leaf's vision within that, that narrative? Yeah, sure. So, you know, everybody, I think, has their own definition of what sustainability is. And the benefit is that, and this is a little different, but our perception of, you know, society is a construction of the human mind, right? So what is sustainable today may not be tomorrow. But when you look back throughout history, you realize sustainability is not new. Um, and it encompasses a lot more things than just emissions. Uh, it encompasses technology, biology, resource constraints. And what it really is, is it's taking the traditional method of evaluating economics and adding another dimension or a layer to it, which is resource constraints in certain cases. And so what's exciting about electric vehicles is that it represents an opportunity where uh, we can improve productivity, improve our use of innovative technologies, but also do so in a way that uh, you know is 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 better for the environment. Again, EVs are not perfect. Batteries, when they degrade, are radioactive, so it's not perfect. Um, but uh, it's it's a step forward. But the other thing too is that the amount of power that we would consume uh, as we move toward an EV world. Uh, is a demonstration of the maturation of society, right? Like the more, you know, physics, you can't change physics. If you want to do big things, you need big energy. Like that's just, that's kind of how it works. And so the more we learn how to adapt and use big energy, the likelihood of us doing big things is higher. Uh, and so taking that back to sustainability, I think it's not about using less energy and, and being green. It's more about uh, using more energy and being productive because what ends up happening is by doing that, we waste less to begin with, right? Like it's not economically viable to create waste. So uh, it's, it's, it's a lot more complicated than just emissions. We have our own kind of proprietary perspective based on my experience at, at, at my prior firms uh, and, my, my, and my partner's experience, uh, but there's no silver bullet. It's, a, it, it's not a goal, it's how we get to the future. That's, that's, that's the challenge I have. Everyone thinks it's this goal, we're just gonna become sustainable. Well, it's, no, like uh, you, you, you have to be sustainable as you transition into the future, otherwise there won't be a future. 
Thanks so much indeed, Brad. Well, I won't use any more of my energy. I'll use some of the energy of our online audience. So there are a bunch of questions that have come in uh, for you. Uh, one of them is from Paul Contreras, who asks uh, a question around timing. His question is, uh, you know, a lot of investments in the EV sector have failed. Why, why is now a good time to invest? Uh, it, it, it may not be. Uh, again, like that, that's the benefit of, of time. Uh, I'll give you some stats though. So in, 19, in, in 1907, 30% of all vehicles sold in this country were electric. Um, and uh, it was in 1912 that uh, the electric vehicle started to kind of face its demise. And the reason why was at the time, you had to hand crank uh, a vehicle to start it up. And somebody was smart enough to take a gasoline vehicle and put a fuel pump system that allowed you to no longer have to hand crank the car to turn it on. Now it's in combination with that and the cost and complexity of the infrastructure to charge electric vehicles, which was very immature back then, that made electric vehicles no, like not the most competitive technology. But if you look at it today, and it, again, it's ironic, right? Like the first EV was invented right at the same time as the gasoline vehicle and the battery was invented in you know, the 1700s technically. So like technology as it gets invented takes about 100 years to adopt if it's capital intensive and that cycle starting to change with you know, productivity increases. But the point is, is the difference between then and today is that uh, the convenience of an electric vehicle, which is really the, the important part for the consumer, is, is there now. People want access to these things. And so if people want things, the costs to produce them will deflate. And those costs are right on the cusp of being competitive now. It's, just, it's so close today versus 100 years ago that uh, it's not a matter of if, but when. And I think it's very soon, uh, not because uh, there's a ton of millennials that have a lot of disposable income to buy the vehicles, uh, but I think it's because on the fleet side of things, I think uh, if you drive enough miles, um, the cost of owning an electric vehicle, if you're purchasing uh, power at a relatively attractive price, will make it pencil much faster. Um, and so I, I see this opportunity as uh, fleets uh, not being immediate, but being the most commercialized um, at scale. And, uh, and, and, uh, and then over time, you know, the other industries will, will mature and adopt them. But again, I could be wrong. And uh, there could be a deal that uh, I'm going to look at yesterday or, or, or in a week. And, I'm, I, you know, and my perspective will change. I, 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 only change. I always change my mind when I'm wrong and I'm wrong often. Very good. So thanks so much indeed, Brad.